What's up guys, my name is Krista. Today I'm going to show you guys 10 things about my boat that makes it completely livable. Also, there's gonna be a bonus item at the end that I think is a must have, especially for modern day. Um, so watch to the end to see that. Just so you guys know, I'm not a full-time liveaboard yet. I am working towards that. There's a couple things I need to add to my boat so I can get to that point, but that is my long-term goal. I wanna live aboard the boat full-time and sail around from harbor to harbor and explore the world. So there's a couple things in this list that I don't have yet, but I am working towards getting. And yeah, let's get into it. Number one, all pirates have to have rum. Number two, all pirates have to have treasure. No, I'm just kidding, all right, let's actually get into it. Okay, so the first thing I did to make my boat more livable was install a solar panel. This is absolutely necessary when you are on the hook. You need to have power and you need a way to charge your batteries, other words, all your batteries are gonna die, you're not gonna be able to start the engine, and it's gonna make your life really difficult. You're not gonna be able to charge anything. So this is my solar panel. It attaches to the top of my bimini. So you plug this in. And then once it's plugged in, it is now charging the batteries down below once I flip the switch on. And um, it stays on top of my bimini. It doesn't fly off from these hooks right here. When I am sailing in heavy winds, I will take the solar panel down and put it down below, um, which is called stowing it. I will stow it uh, because I don't want anything to happen to it. They're pretty expensive and they are pretty much like a lifeline. Let me show you guys my battery compartment, how I connect the solar to the batteries and how I turn it on. These are my batteries I have three of them there's a little light right here that will light up and that means it's on so this is what connects to up above which connects to these clamps which once you clamp them onto your positive and negative of your batteries it will charge them so my particular solar panel will keep my batteries charged as long as I um, have good sun so whenever I'm out on the hook I don't really worry about my batteries going low okay so I also have another solar panel that will charge my dinghy batteries it's down below um, let's get it and I'll show it to you guys okay so this is the solar panel that I use to charge my dinghy battery but basically I just lay it out on the front of my boat or if my batteries are completely charged I'll lay it out on top of my bimini sometimes if it's not sunny enough not it won't even get a full charge sometimes it takes up to two days to completely charge them but it charges them enough to where if I need to go ashore and back I have enough power uh, I don't really know what else to say about it besides this is the one I used to charge my dinghy battery so let's put this away um, when I use the inverter it pulls a lot of power so I always try to make sure that I have the solar on when I'm using the inverter this is what the front of my inverter looks like this is the AC output so as you can see you can plug in three different things to it and what I do is I take uh, the cord that's plugged into the wall right here and I plug it down through this hole right there into the front of the inverter that way if I need to use any of these outlets while I'm on uh not on shore power i can use it okay so i feel like that was kind of like five things in one but um that is it for the first thing let's move on to the next thing okay so the next thing that every liveaboard absolutely needs is a dinghy this is my dinghy check it out so without a dinghy you would not be able to get to and from shore when you're staying on the hook um you would also not be able to get to and from shore when you're staying on a mooring like if you go to avalon and you grab a mooring uh you need to get to shore somehow in other words you have to pay for the shore boat um, I use this dinghy to go over to the yacht club to uh, pick up my friends from the front of the dock sometimes for 4th of July water wars which is so much fun for cruising around the harbor if you are living on the hook you would use this dinghy to go get groceries think of it as like your car okay so a dinghy is basically like a car for boat owners you stay on your boat but then in order to get places you use your dinghy <laughs> I don't know <laughs> okay, a dinghy is a necessity. Okay, so sticking to the outside of the boat, the next thing that is really important, um, if, especially if you're staying on the hook all the time, is a powerful, reliable windlass. Let me show you guys mine. So we're gonna open up my anchor. Oh, see, that is why you always use a safety thing. Let me move my stubber lines out of the way. Hey, Keeks, what are you doing? Hey. You're, why are you off the boat? No one told you you could get off the boat. Let's go, come on, get back on the boat. <sighs> Problem child. You know, they have a saying with um, people that your second child is always like your problem child. 
It's true with dogs too. My second dog is my problem dog. Okay, anyway, back to the windlass. Okay, so this right here is my windlass. It pulls the anchor up and down. Um, as you can see, it's attached to the anchor right there. Let me show you guys kind of how it works. So these are the buttons that control it. You push this and it lets line out. Um, and then you push this one and it pulls the line in. The windlass is super important because without it, you would be pulling up probably at least 100 feet of road and chain every single time you go anchor. I mean, that could be really hard on your back. For me, it is awful to have to pull up an anchor. I mean, it just, whew, it's a workout. Skip the gym, go pull up an anchor if you really wanna get buff, let me tell you. And you have to do it as the boat's moving forward as well. So, especially if you're solo sailing, you kind of have to move the boat forward and then run up here and press the button. But if I had to run up here and pull up anchor, pull up anchor, run to the back, move it forward a little, pull up anchor, pull up anchor, it would just be, I mean, honestly, it's doable don't get me wrong it's doable plenty of sailors have done it but it would be a nightmare and it'd be super hard i can't i can't like express it enough how you do not want to pull up an anchor without a windlass i'm gonna put my silver lines back in i'm gonna close up the buttons and undo the safety hook and we're gonna close up the anchor locker lock it up all right, so the fourth thing that is absolutely necessary, especially if you're gonna be a live aboard, is a fishing pole. This is my fishing pole. A fishing pole is absolutely necessary, especially if you're going to be a live aboard because you can catch fish and then you can eat and then you're not gonna have to go to the store as much. I will just go out and catch some fish and make fish tacos on Taco Tuesdays. And yeah, so this fishing pole is awesome. A lot of times I will also just drop it into the harbor here and let it sit on the bottom. I will catch um, sand bass and halibut and um, there's croakers here but I normally toss those back so yeah you absolutely need a fishing pole if you're gonna be a live aboard. But the fifth thing that is completely <coughs> excuse me Kiki <coughs> our rowers are going by come on come here chill out okay okay so the fifth thing that is absolutely necessary especially if you're gonna be a live aboard is autopilot this right here is my autopilot basically what you do is this lever right here you're going to push down that's going to lock the steering wheel into the place of the course it wants to go and then you're going to push auto once it's on auto now it's going to drive itself so it's see how it's already trying to adjust the steering wheel to stay on course even though we're in the dock so um, it's automatically going to drive for you okay so with autopilot you're gonna be able to go out and sail and take your buoys up from the sides put up your main sail you're gonna be able to pull out your jib adjust the sails if you need to go down below to make food or use the bathroom or sorry use the head or grab something that you might have forgotten or that you need Need, um, you're gonna be able to do it with autopilot especially if you're solo sailing also with autopilot it makes long journeys a lot easier so going to Catalina takes about seven to eight hours sometimes on this boat so it is absolutely necessary to have autopilot on also when dolphins come and surround the boat I like to run up to the front and look at them because uh, they jump right by the front of the boat so I love autopilot for that as well and it just makes it so much easier when you're out sailing um, but especially for for long journeys it's needed that way you're not constantly correcting because once you set a course you have to keep the boat on that course and the wind and the waves and the current are going to try to steer you off of that course so autopilot will automatically keep you on your course so something that I unfortunately don't have on my boat yet but I'm going to get eventually is a water maker this is absolutely necessary if you're going to be a live aboard on the hook because you need to be able to drink water in order to live um, and you don't want to constantly be having to go to the store and if you go on long journeys you want to make sure that you have enough water to drink um, so you want to be able to make your own water especially if something goes wrong and you get stuck at sea and you don't have water that's gonna be a whole issue so these are pretty pricey see they cost anywhere from four to five thousand dollars sometimes more and it is the ability to convert seawater
water into fresh water in order to fill up um, your fresh water tank. This is only a 31 foot boat, so a water maker isn't super ideal on this size. I would probably want to be on a little bit bigger boat before I put a water maker, but um, my goal is to coastal cruise for a while, so I'll have plenty of access to um, stores and uh, different marinas that I will be able to refill my water tank and go get drinking water from the market. But that's not ideal. Another reason that the water maker is super important is because that is how all of your plumbing works. Um, basically, in order for your toilets to flush, in order to brush your teeth, for water to run out of your sinks, in order for your showers to work, um, all of that requires fresh water. So <laughs> you're gonna want your fresh water tanks full as much as possible and a water maker a water maker will help you keep those full. Okay so the next thing that is super important especially if you're gonna be live aboard is a very comfortable mattress. The reason why I picked the Hunter 310 is because of how big the rear cabin's bed is. Let me show you guys. It is a full queen full-size queen bed I guess that can be confusing because there's full and queens it is a queen size bed let me show you guys okay so it's pretty dark in here let me turn my light on Whoo! there we go okay so there is a queen size bed in this cabin you can see right there that is where I store my solar panel for um, my dinghy you guys saw how big that was especially when it was folded up um, so this is how big the bed is not only is this bed huge, completely comfortable for me to sleep in, but my dogs also sleep in the bed with me, and we have plenty of room. There's enough for two people in this bed, plus two dogs. When I've taken a bunch of my friends sailing before, two of us have slept in there, two of us sleep in the V-berth, two of us sleep on the couches out there. This is completely necessary, in my opinion, to have a comfortable mattress, especially if you're going to be on the boat full time. You're sleeping here every night. You don't want to have next problems or back problems or anything but let me show you the other thing that's cool about this mattress is that it folds up that way I am able to access underneath and um, this is actually how you get into where the stuffing box is and um, there's a couple storage things underneath so let me guys sh let me show you guys that okay we're just gonna move all the pillows really quick there's my charger so you can see right here this line um, this is where it folds. We're able to lift this up and completely fold it over and then that way you have access under here. I moved this so you guys can see. Um, down and under there. That's where you can have access to your stuff stuffing box. There's also another compartment under here. Okay, so one of the last things that is really important to have on board is a working shower, a working toilet, and running water. So basically a full-size head with a working macerator as well. What is a macerator? Well, it's pretty gross, but what it is is it's a device that chops up everything that goes down the toilet and it's able to pump it out into the ocean. You should only use your macerator if you're three miles away from shore. Those are the laws. That way you're not contaminating, you know, the ocean. But guys, don't freak out. Fish pee and poop in the ocean as well, so it's not that big of a deal. Nothing beats a nice warm shower after a long day in the water or on boats. Let me tell you, you're sticky and salty from the seawater, and the hot shower is everything. So this right here pulls out, connects right up there, and then I can turn the water on and it's a full-size hot water shower. Okay, so the last thing that is super important to have if you're gonna be a liveaboard is a place that you can cook food and something that will keep your food cold. So on this boat, I have a fridge that is AC-DC, which means it can either plug into the outlet or I can plug it into a DC outlet and it'll um, keep running directly from my batteries. I also have a electric stove top and I have a uh, two portable stove tops that run off of butane or propane. I also have a grill that I installed on the back of the boat. Uh, let me show you guys all of this. Okay, so this is my electric stove. It can plug into the outlet right here. I also can plug it down in there into the inverter. Um, it has two burners on it. It works really well for me. When I am using it on the inverter, I can only use one of the burners, however. So I also have these. Um, they are portable stoves. You can pretty much get them anywhere, to be honest. Um, oh, upside down. So they look like this. Um, I have butane and propane and the attachments in order to do it. You can put your butane, um, it plugs in right in here. It'll screw onto it right in here. And then, um, this one is like not on right now. 
Oh, it's backwards. Hold on. So I've put this away. Okay, there we go. Um, and then this right here will light and start the fire, and then the gas comes out of there, and you can just put your pan on here and cook. Um, so it works really well. I have two of these, and I make sure I bring them with me on every trip. Um, then the other thing I have is this um, fridge. So it's a pull-out fridge. Um, ignore the amount of coffee creamer I have in there. Uh, they have a flavor I really like, and I wanted to make sure they got it before it sold out. But what's cool about this fridge is it also has a little freezer area, so I can put anything in here, and it will stay absolutely frozen. And it's a pull-out fridge, which is really nice. And then I also installed this drawer that I keep all of my cooking stuff in. The other thing that's really cool about the fridge being able to be um, an AC slash DC fridge is when I am underway, I'm able to keep all of my food cold, and I don't have to buy a ton of ice, which is really nice. I can also uh, make my own ice with ice trays and just putting in that freezer right there and then I have ice on board okay so the very last bonus thing that I think every boat should have especially if you're someone like me who makes videos for you guys is Starlink it is amazing um, I have a friend who has it and let me tell you it works no matter where they sail it's incredible Starlink would allow me to respond to comments to you guys respond to emails upload videos edit things basically surf the internet whatever I need to do on the internet I'd be able to do with Starlink also probably most of the old-fashioned sailors are gonna be like no the internet is not necessary on a boat but I'm a millennial and for me it's definitely necessary you also might be like isn't the point of boats to get away from everything yeah but I I think it's cool to get away from everything but still have access to everything okay thank you guys so much for watching those are the 10 things plus a bonus thing that I think are so important especially if you're gonna be a live aboard thank you so much for watching guys I will see you guys in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe let me know if there's something I completely left out or forgot if you say something like oh sales okay thank you no but um, to make boats more livable let me know if you think I forgot anything um, put it in the comments down below maybe I need it and maybe I don't have it or I'm not aware of it so yeah uh, let me know what you guys think